how can we prove that Islam is the right way of life, is the best way of life? If we analyze most of the major religions, they speak good things. Most of the major religions, they tell us not to rob, not to cheat, not to molest a woman. But the difference between Islam and the other religions is that Islam shows you a way how to achieve a state of that goodness. For example, all the religions say that you should not rob. Hinduism says that. Christianity says that. Judaism says that. Islam says the same. But Islam shows you a way how to achieve a state in which people will not rob. Islam has a system of zakat that is every rich person who has a saving of more than the nisab level, more than 85 grams of gold, he or she should give 2.5% of that excess wealth in charity every lunar year. If every rich human being gives zakat, poverty will be eradicated from this world. There will not be a single human being who will die of hunger. And according to statistics, we come to know that the income of the three richest people in the world is equal to the GDP of the 47 poorest country in the world. And there's another statistic that if a few hundred richest people in the world, if they give zakat, 2.5% of the wealth in charity, poverty will be eradicated from this world. After this, the glorious Quran says, in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 38, As to the thief, be it a man or a woman, chop off his or her hand as a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Non-Muslim will say, chopping off the hands in this age of science and technology, Islam is a barbaric religion. It's a ruthless way of life. And they think that if you go to Saudi Arabia, where this law is practiced, every second person you come across will have his hands chopped off. I have been to Saudi Arabia several times. I have not seen a single human being whose hands have been chopped off. There may be a few people whose hands have been chopped off, but it is not as common as they think it is. Do you know today, people look up to USA, America, as one of the most advanced countries in the world. Do you know it has one of the highest rate of robbery and theft in the world? I'm asking a simple question. That if you implement the Islamic Sharia in USA, or in North America, that every rich man who has a saving of more than 85 grams of gold, should give 2.5% of that excess wealth in charity, that is zakat. And after that, if any person robs, chop of his or her hand as a punishment, I'm asking a question. Will the rate of robbery and theft, will it increase? Will it remain the same? Or will it decrease? But naturally it will decrease. It's a practical law. You implement the sharia and you get results. That's the reason the least rate of robbery and theft in the world in any country, it's in Saudi Arabia. Similarly, most of the major religions say that you should not molest a woman, that you should not rape a woman. Hinduism says that, Christianity says that, Judaism says that, Islam says the same. But Islam shows you a way how to achieve a state in which people, no man will molest or rape any woman. Islam has a system of hijab. Normally people speak about the hijab for the woman. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the glorious Quran first speaks about the hijab for the man and then for the woman. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 30, Say to the believing man that he should lower his gaze and guard his modesty. That whenever any brazen thought comes in your mind, whenever anyone looks at a woman, the man, he should lower his gaze. After that, the Quran speaks about the hijab for the woman. In Surah Nur, chapter 24, verse number 31, where Allah says, Say to the believing woman that she should lower her gaze and guard her modesty. And display not her beauty except what appears ordinary of. And draw her veil, a head covering, over the bosom. And display not her beauty except in front of her husband, her son, her father, and a big list of maram, the close relatives which she can't marry, is given. There are basically six criteria for hijab given in the Quran and the Sahih Hadith. The first is the extent which differs between the man and the woman. For the man, it's from the navel to the knee. For the woman, the complete body should be covered. The only part that can be seen are the face and the hand is up to the wrist. The remaining five criteria are the same for the man and the woman. The second is the clothes they wear. It should not be tight so that it reveals the figure. Third, 
it should not be transparent. Fourth, it should not be so glamorous so that it attracts the opposite sex. Fifth, it should not resemble that of the opposite sex. And sixth, it should not be a sign of the unbeliever. And the reason for hijab is given in Surah Azab, chapter 33, verse number 59, where Allah says, O Prophet, tell your wives and your daughters and the believing women that when they go abroad, they should put on the cloak so that they shall be recognized and it will prevent them from being molested. Quran says, hijab has been prescribed for the women so that they shall be recognized and it will prevent them from being molested. For example, if there are two twin sisters who are very beautiful or equally beautiful and if they are walking down the streets of Toronto, maybe Young Street, and if one twin sister, she is wearing the Islamic hijab, the complete body cover except the face and the hands up to the wrist, and the other twin sister, she is wearing the western clothes, the mini skirts are short, and if round the corner there is a hooligan, there is a ruffian who is waiting for a catch, who is waiting to tease a girl, which girl will he tease? Will he tease the girl wearing the Islamic hijab, or will he tease the girl wearing the mini skirts or short? After that, the Islamic Sharia says, if any man rapes any woman, he gets capital punishment, death penalty. People say, death penalty in this age of science and technology, Islam is a barbaric religion. It's a ruthless way of life. But when I ask this question to thousands of non-Muslims, that God forbid, if someone rapes your mother, rapes your sister, and if you are made the judge, and if the rapist is born in front of you, what punishment will you give him? And all of them, 100% said, we will put him to death. Some went to the extent of saying, we will torture him to death. So why these double standards? Someone rapes your mother, your sister, you want to put him to death. Somebody rapes somebody else's mother or sister, you say death penalty is a barbaric law. Do you know, according to statistics, USA, which happens to be one of the most advanced countries in the world, do you know it has one of the highest rate of rape in the world? According to the FBI statistics, in 1990 alone, on average, every day, 1,756 rapes took place every day in the year 1990. According to the US Department of Justice, in the year 1996, on average, every day, 2,713 cases of rape took place. In the year 1990, 1,756. In the year 1996, 2,713. Maybe the Americans got more bold. That means every 32 seconds, one rape is taking place in USA. You know, we are here in this auditorium, maybe for the past six hours. Already 600 rapes may have taken place in USA till the time you are here. I am asking the question that if you implement the Islamic Sharia in USA, that if any man looks at a woman, any brazen thought, any unashamed thought comes in his mind, he should lower his gaze. After that, every woman should be properly covered, complete body, except the face and the hands up to the wrist. After that, any man rapes a woman, capital punishment. I am asking the question, will the rate of rape in America, in USA, will it increase? Will it remain the same or will it decrease? Will it increase? Will it remain the same or will it decrease? It will decrease. It's a practical law. You implement the Sharia and you get results. That's the reason I say Islam, besides speaking good things, it shows you a way how to achieve the state of goodness. Therefore, I say that Islam is the best way of life. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 19, in the in Islam, the only religion acceptable in the sight of Allah is Islam. Takbir.